everyone, welcome back to Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. Today I'm going to be doing my top 10, well, maybe it's a top 12 technically, Hercule Poirot books. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name's Alice and I have way too many books. And if you haven't been here before, you may not know that I am a huge fan of Agatha Christie's mystery books, particularly her Belgian detective, Hercule Poirot. I'm going to link a, a number of videos in the description box down below if you want to hear more about my uh, sort of history with Agatha Christie. I have a video all about Poirot. I have a tag video all about Poirot. I'm gonna link everything Agatha Christie in the description box down below. Um, but today is going to be all about my top 10 Poirot. And why am I doing it this week? It's because this week marks Agatha Christie's 132nd birthday. She was born on the 15th of September, 1890. So in this week in September, to mark Agatha Christie's birthday and celebrate it, the International Agatha Christie Festival goes on in Torquay every year during the week of Agatha Christie's birthday. And so last year, my first year on Booktube, I decided to have a week-long Agatha Christie celebration and I made three videos then to celebrate Agatha Christie. I'm only going to do two this year. The two videos this week are going to be my top 10 Hercule Poirot books and later in the week on Agatha Christie's actual birthday, hopefully if it's ready in time, will be my reader's guide to Miss Marple. For those of you who've been around a bit longer, you will know that the reason I'm wearing this hat is because it is my Hercule Poirot hat from my Reader's Guide to Hercule Poirot. So yeah, I thought I'd wear that today in honour of the occasion. So Hercule Poirot has long been my favourite, favourite detective and it was really hard to pick a top 10. So this is really a top 12, to be honest. It's very difficult for me to rank these books because I have my firm favourites. But when I looked back for my top 10 overall Agatha Christie's at my original ratings that I gave these books in my book journal, I did rate some of the books that I have come to think of as being my top favourites quite low on the first read. And I don't know why that was. They obviously have lasted with me and grown in my head to be favourites. Some of these is a very long time since I've read them and I am looking forward to going back to them and rereading them. And that is my caveat really to my top 12. I have had to consider whether they have lasted with me, but I have included um, a couple in there that I rated really, really highly on the first read and have since not really ever thought of as my favourites. That is why it has become a top 12. I am sure when I reread most of these books, the order will change around, but just to say everything in this top 12, if you're going to read an Agatha Christie, these are really good Hercule Poirot mysteries. Starting with Death on the Nile, a lot of people's favourite Poirot book. I have reread this one recently and I do still like it and I do think this is a really good Agatha Christie. It is a good Poirot book with an intriguing mystery and unfortunately on a reread I could remember some of the key plot details and I do find that on a reread these are even more fun if you've forgotten as much as possible. But it's not very easy to forget such a famous one. Death on the Nile follows Poirot as he takes a cruise on the Nile and along with him is a group of people who include a newly married couple and uh, the woman who wanted to marry the man before this newly married couple got married. Yeah, there's a bit of tension going on there. This book really ramps up the tension by giving us quite a long time before any big events occur. This is one of Christie's more suspenseful, um, longer build-ups in which you get a lot of character study. I wouldn't probably recommend this as the first Agatha Christie that you read, but I do really enjoy reading this book and I enjoyed revisiting it. And in at number 11, but probably on the same footing as Death on the Nile, this is the book that I, for some in inexplicable reason, rated second highest when I first read these books. And I haven't reread this one. And it is taken at the flood. 
Taken at the Flood is a bit of a different Poirot in that it is set firmly in its time frame uh, of wartime. I obviously enjoyed this one a lot more than I remembered enjoying it on first reading and I actually remember comparatively little about this. I am looking forward to a reread although I know that I do remember a key detail. Taken at the Flood is an interesting one that I'll have to include it here but it may not end up being a firm top favourite. So in at number 10, I'm going to say The Mysterious Affair at Styles. This was Agatha Christie's first book and it features the first appearance of Hercule Poirot and his erstwhile friend, Captain Hastings. I have a lot of nostalgic feelings for this book, although it wasn't the first Poirot that I read. I really love the setup of being introduced to Poirot for the first time, even if it wasn't my first time with Poirot. And I think this is a very readable mystery. It's set at the eponymous Styles, a country house, and I do love a country house murder, so this one's in at number 10. In at number nine, we have The Murder of Roger Ackroyd. I actually really rated this very poorly when I first read it, but over time, this has become, in my mind, a book that I really, really enjoyed, so that's a bit mysterious in itself. But this is one of Agatha's most famous creations, and it was a moment where she showed the world that she was doing different things to other detective writers. I love this book as an example of just the sheer ingenuity of Christie. As you can tell from the title, Poirot is attempting to solve the murder of Roger Ackroyd in this book. In number eight, I'm going to say Lord Edgware Dies. This is another one that I rated quite low on first reading, but remember it being really, really good. In this one, Lady Edgware is accused of the murder of her husband, which she professes not to have done, but it looks very bleak against her and she calls upon Hercule Poirot of course to solve the case. I have really fond memories of this one but according to my book journal it wasn't my favourite so that's why it's coming this low down in my top 10. I'm really really looking forward to rereading this and Roger Ackroyd. Next up at number seven I believe Hercule Poirot's Christmas. I haven't reread this one either but I do remember this one quite well and Although this is a book set at Christmas time, it is also a, a book that I think I sometimes write off in my head because it's, it's called something like Hercule Poirot's Christmas. But this is a quintessential locked room mystery and that is what I absolutely love about it. I love a locked room in detective fiction. This is purely and simply a locked room mystery with a very limited pool of suspects, one family, and the head of the family, who is disliked of course, is murdered over the Christmas period. And Poirot happens to be on hand to investigate. I highly, highly recommend reading it. It's a really, really good locked room mystery. In at number six, a book that I love more for a character that features in it than any other factor, and that is Dumb Witness. This has such a special place in my heart, and the main thing that has a special place in my heart about the book Dumb Witness is Bob the Dog. Bob the Dog assists Poirot in solving the murder of his owner, an elderly lady who has recently passed away. Poirot is too late to stop this murder. He has been written to by the victim, arrives after she has died, and Bob <laughs> attempts to help in the solving of the mystery. And I just, I love this purely for sentimental reasons, but I think it was also a really, really good book, and I will very much look forward to rereading this one. Into my top five, these are books that I am very, very fond of. I'm going to go with one of Agatha Christie's darkest books in at number five, The ABC Murders. This is a really brutal story within the Poirot canon and viewed by many as probably one of Christie's darkest books. I love this book, I think it's brilliant. And the premise of this is quite simple. It's called The ABC Murders because Alice Asher has been murdered in Andover, followed very quickly by Betty Barnard being murdered in Bex Hill. The murderer has left an ABC 
railway guide at the scene. I find this one of Poirot's most interesting cases as he really tries to chase a serial killer down and stop more murders from happening. I think this one is really, really well done. And it could definitely end up higher on the list on a reread. This is certainly one that I really did enjoy. On to number four, Cards on the Table. Another sort of a locked room mystery almost with a very small pool of suspects. So Poirot and three other detectives or people with connections to detecting are um, gathered together by the mysterious Mr. Shaitana. And in the room with them are four other um, other guests who are all suspects when their host is found murdered in the room with four detectives. So yeah, this one I find really mysterious and really, really intriguing. Okay, into my top three and I am pretty secure in my top three. Don't think there's really any movement between the three of them and hasn't been for a number of years. So these are my top, top Poirot books. And the first one is actually one that I would definitely say not to read first. And in fact, I would say if you intend to read Poirot and you intend to read all of the Poirot, read this last. If you only intend to read a few Poirot, definitely make sure this is one of them, but I would read it last out of the Poirots you are reading if you can. And that is Curtin, Poirot's last case. Christie famously wrote this during the Second World War and stored it away for a later date in case she was to die during the Blitz. This is a wonderful ending to the Poirot series. When I read it, this made me cry a lot. I felt like I was saying goodbye to a friend because I'd read all of his other books and it really felt like an ending for me. I highly, highly recommend Curtain, in which Poirot is much older and has wound up back at Styles, the scene of his first case with Hastings. Hastings is in this one too, and this is just a lovely conclusion to the series, which also has a really, really good murder mystery in it. This received the highest rating from me on the first reading. It does have a nostalgic value for me, but not as much as the other two that I'm about to mention. So into second place, we have one of the Poirots that I have reread already. And rereading this actually made me like it even more somehow, even though this is one where I very much know what the identity of the murderer is. And that is Murder on the Orient Express, Christie's and Poirot's most famous case. This has been made into so many films and adaptations and it really is sort of marketed as Christie's really famous book apart from her standalone and then there were none. And this was the very first Agatha Christie I read and it sent me down a rabbit hole of reading nothing but Christie for about a month and I never looked back. I've been reading Poirot and Christie for years afterwards and on a reread I expected to lo almost like this less because I knew what was going to happen but no I still absolutely loved this and I think that although this is not one where you get to know Poirot really really well this is one that is so interesting in the way Christie pulls it off. It is of course set on the eponymous Orient Express train which becomes stranded in a snowdrift and a passenger has been murdered. Poirot tries to get to the bottom of this. Again, it's a very close circle of suspects, which is my absolute favorite. Love this. Real sentimental value as the first one that I read and topped only by a book that I love so much. So in at number one, if you've been around for a while, you will know what book this is going to be. And it is of course, Five Little Pigs. I think this is such an underrated genius Agatha Christie. This is a book about Caroline Crail and her husband Amius and Caroline, the murder takes place a long time in the past. So Caroline Crail has been convicted of her husband's murder. She has died in prison and it is her daughter who comes to Poirot to ask him to look at this case again and prove once and for all that it was not her mother who murdered her father. Poirot of course warns her that she may not like what she finds out and it may be that the case was solved correctly. 
but there are five suspects, five little pigs, and Poirot somehow manages to delve deep into the past and get to the bottom of this mystery. I absolutely love this. I think that part of my love for it is the fact that it's not billed as one of Agatha Christie's top, top books. I think that this is just quietly showing how great Agatha Christie was and how great she could make Poirot's detecting skills going back in time to solve murders. This is not the only case that Poirot solves that is kind of a cold case or a case that was thought to have already been solved. He does that in several books but in my mind this is the most successful of those books and I absolutely love it. That was my top 10 Hercule Poirot books. Did you see any Poirots on this list that you love? Are there any that you feel I am missing from my top 12 that you would definitely put in your top 10 or 12? Do let me know in the comments what you think and if you haven't read Poirot yet let me know and I will be happy to give recommendations. I hope you've enjoyed my top 10 Hercule Poirot books and if you have I hope you'll give it a like, I hope you'll consider subscribing if you haven't already. As I've said I'll leave my other Agatha Christie content down below and I do have a playlist of all of these as well if you would like to see it. And I will be back later in the week with a video about Miss Marple and I hope you will join me then. Bye for now!